Well, they are super rare, and, and we've done very well in being able to see them both last night and this morning. And I'm sure it's the same, one of the same birds that we saw last night. It's not far from where I had them in the sunset sort of time yesterday, and they seem to have just flown this way. And we were sitting with the elephants, and we could hear them calling close by, and we then managed to spot them as we were just driving southwards, trying to see if we could get a gap on our elephants. And they're sitting in the tree and just grooming themselves, and I can't see clearly whether it's a male and a female or is it two males. It looks like two males. And the reason why I say that is because you can sex these ground hornbills by the coloration underneath their beak. So you'll find that the males will be bright red like we see there and will have red underneath their throats. But the females will start to get a little bleeding of, of almost a purple coloration that starts at the base of the beak and then will start to go out into that red and as they get older it becomes more and more pronounced and I just can't see any purple on these guys at all so it looks like two boys and there was a female calling from around here but she might be down on the ground already starting to feed it's this time of the day that you'll find the hornbills are quite active in feeding because what happens is a lot of what they feed off is reptiles and so things like snakes um, chameleons lizards this time of the day most of those animals have not had a chance to warm up and are quite sluggish and slow and it's a great time then for them to go hunting and to find those animals and be able to grab them they'll also be able to grab insects that are still quite cold on the grass and so you find now is when these guys are really quite active so a little bit of grooming a little bit of getting all the feathers into good condition and then i reckon we'll see them going down into the grass to start their foraging for the morning that's a good yoga pose that. I've got the foot right up to the chin, giving it a good scratch. I don't see any purple on that one either, so it definitely looks like two males at this stage. But they are such odd looking birds. To me they look very prehistoric. They look as though they come from another time with that sort of wattled face and those big black jet black wings and long legs. They almost seem like they come from when it was dinosaurs. And you can imagine pterodactyls would have been something quite similar on a much larger scale. But, but imagine that's what they would have looked like with these big beaks and these sort of gnarly faces and big eyes that look at you and then those long feet. And I was saying just now that these guys are quite prolific hunters. It's amazing actually to watch a grouping of ground hornbills walk around. And if you spend a bit of time with them, it's incredible how efficient they are at finding what they're looking for and those big eyes will help them to be able to see what's going on and I've seen ground hornbills walking along and catching multiple different prey animals in a morning session and once followed a ground hornbill flock for about half an hour and in that time they managed to get a couple snakes there was a chameleon that was caught a lizard a couple scorpions and varying sorts of crickets and even a mouse got killed as well so they really do go after quite a bit and when it's breeding season it's the best time to follow them because what you'll find is the males will come down and they'll grab all of these varying types of animals and they'll grab you know the mice and the lizards and the chameleons and the snakes and then they'll go and present them to the female and so they have this beak full of different gifts basically and they go up to the female and they present it to her and that's how they try and woo her into mating with them so it's a very clever system that they have now i was talking about sort of how we get to know the difference between the male and females and well I had the book out just so that I could show you but here is the male on top you see he's got the red like what we've been seeing on these two birds in the tree and the red around the eye area but the female you see she gets a little bit of purple that gets into her sort of underneath her beak now I'm going to just get my finger out so there's that purple and that will be varying sort of patterns and shades as she gets older and will start to kind of bleed out a little bit and it's not quite as neat as what we see there and you'll notice that the young ones they end up with a situation where they have this yellow face patch and, and face skin and that will then change color into the red as they get older. It normally starts to change at about three years old so it goes from that yellowish color more towards that red at about three and it takes a while for it to change. It doesn't just change overnight and there we go. That's the male, female and juvenile. And you can then see in flight those big white edges that we saw them busy grooming just now. Very cool.